Ford Bronco 2024 news. And also let's talk about future Broncos, 2025 all the way to 2020, 2030, sorry. And let's talk about some of these changes. Now we've gone, we're not gonna go through all the changes that have occurred since 2021 to now because we just did two videos on them. We had a premiere earlier. So catch those videos, 2024 changes to catch all the very detailed. And it's wild. I've gone, I've read some car and driver. I've read motor trend. I've gone through all the news sources. And so far, the only two people that I've found across the entire internet that are covering all the changes to the 2024 Bronco are Tim Bartz from Long MacArthur Ford and myself. We took the time to make the list and go through the entire list. That's why I'm making a bit of a poop face here. It's hard going through all the details and doing all this memory work without any notes. Look, these hands, there's no notes and I don't have crib notes. Um, you know, I wasn't a cheater in university writing uh, things on the top of my hat or, you know, on the back of my hands or whatnot. So no cheater crib notes. But the big thing is Ford has truly listened to the consumer base, the customer base, the fan base, and they've given us a lot of what we have asked for. They even tried for 2023 to give us a sub to make the sound better, the sound system better, but instead they gave us a sub box, a speaker with no, a sub with no magnet and an amplifier that just doesn't work. But I highly suspect all the electric wiring is there right to the radio. So I really want you to say yes and let me throw in a sub back there. But I need to, I don't want to have to do the whole wiring. I, my back hurts way too much to be to get to be ripping through uh, uh, through all the carpeting, lifting up all the carpeting, and then I'm too nervous popping out a radio. This isn't you know mm -hmm. the, you, I used to Could always do this. Great danger I've to done, pop out the radio. You I, know, break yeah. stuff. I've done a lot of sound systems, <laughs> but they're on 10, 15 year old vehicles. Now Lily is actually kicking the camera stand. So if you could actually take care <laughs> of Lily, Lily, that would be really appreciated. Yeah. So. Ford Bronco, you know, early on we said how we didn't mind going to soft top to actually get our Broncos as long as all the equipment was back there so that if we went to a hard top, we could just, you know, plug and play and get that wiper and the, the wiper liquid back out there. Ford ran that for us. They made that modification. And the big point I want to bring home is if you are shopping a used Bronco, keep in mind 21, 2021 was the first year. Don't think that these things have bad engines because of, well, bad media. Bad media basically just went ahead and ran the story and, you know, wasn't telling us that there was only 50 some 2.7 liters that the engines blew. They were just going on and on about going on and on about how there's these failed engines and that the Bronco had a bad engine. This was valves from another company, um, Ford had to outsource their valves, the valve train unit, they had to outsource it. And this company that when they outsourced it, what happened? Well, they had a bad batch. And that bad batch could lead to an engine failure, but I believe every engine has blown under the, the of the 50 some engines, all of them have blown under 12,000 miles. And if it worries you, and if it bothers you, buying a vehicle that has had a swapped engine. Do remember these are crate engines. They're from factory. It's just unbolt, unclip some electronics, rebolt and reclip everything. It ends up taking like, at least 10 hours <laughs> uh, because you have to unbolt the transmission and everything to refill all the liquids. But just do keep in mind that what's really cool is it shouldn't bother you. And it's cool. Okay, you got a, a newer, more recent engine but if that does bother you and you just want to avoid it altogether, you can look at for a Carfax, basically like a car proof, and also check with a Ford dealership to run the vehicle's history. So if Ford's changed an engine, it's going to pop up. So buying a used Bronco can be good. Just don't pay so many of still so many ads I'm seeing on Auto Hebdo, on Facebook Marketplace. I still see people trying to get to sell Broncos that are used for over MSRP. The best deal in Quebec is a wild track. It's a 2022, it's one years one year old, it has 35,000 kilometers and it's $10,000 less. 
but at used vehicle interest rate. And because used interest rate is 3% more than Ford's interest rate, the real difference is only $5,000 if, $5, if you're going to be financing that. And that's the best deal. And I'd say that's almost acceptable. I'd say it's way better to order, but check out where you order. Now, in the live that went on, went down August 14th, 2023, check out that live because I talked about a lot of tricks about manufacturers, especially Ford, works really, really hard to make sure to try to do everything they can within their legal power because they are bound by contractual uh, legalities, um, really stipulations in contracts that are written back in a very different time that they, they've got these contracts with dealers, but they really allocate much, so many fewer vehicles to dealers that have these sit on the lot. So my dealer has three Broncos for sale. They're all at MSRP. That's the way to do business because if you sell them at MSRP or Ford's internet price, you sell them faster and Ford sends those dealers so many more units. There's some dealers in Quebec right now that have four F-150s for sale. We have, must be about seven, well, no heck, I'm not, I'm not just gonna make a crazy average here. But up front, we've got about 20 out back. We've got about 10 available. And on another site, we've got about 10. So what it's like, we've got about 45, 50 trucks for sale when some dealers have four. But I've been told by buyers that those dealers, they're, you know, buying eight hours away and they're buying at my dealer because we're selling not only at MSRP, but on the F-150s when there's $3,750 off an EcoBoost engine like there is now we get them that price. When they have an X-Plan, I get we get them that price unless it's on something rare like a Ford F-150 Raptor where it's non, non-applicable. We can't do an X-Price on certain vehicles like the Raptors and the Shelbys. But uh, that's how you do business. And Ford rewards those dealerships by sending them so many more vehicles. And they can't just give zero vehicles to a dealer because there's contractual obligations to provide them the vehicles to a certain point. They also just don't want to send zero vehicles to an entire region because then YouTube videos that have titles like Ford doesn't, Ford isn't, doesn't want to and isn't selling any Maverick, producing any Mavericks because they only want to sell high-end F-150s. Well, then it makes those titles look true when they're truly not true. So, Marie, how are you finding the Bronco? I love it so much. <laughs> we have space. It's more higher, so we see you very well on the road. Uh, it's easier to it's easy to get into. Yeah, these and... I highly recommend the hoop steps, folks. It's five, five or six hundred dollars, unbelievably well spent on my order, and this only took three and a half months to come in. I deliberately ordered Wild Track, hoping it would take longer because I want to switch my Lightning. We ended up having to sell your Maverick because I'm way upside down. Uh, don't trade in when you're going to lose thirty some thousand dollars on a vehicle you've owned for four months. So you like getting it in? Tell us more. What else do you like about it? Uh, I like the fact that we can remove the top easily. And so water no a... longer comes in the front window because this little ri ri uh, ribbing here makes it so if you open up your window at the drive-in, water doesn't come in mm -hmm. or the drive through mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, I cut you off. Continue. <laughs> I lost my idea. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, it's easy to remove. So we could have a summer car and have sun. And at the same time, it's a good car in the snow in the winter because it's uh, more like an SUV. So the best of both worlds. One the of the best car for me. However, <laughs> it is one of the hardest vehicles on the market to decide which is the right model. In 2024, if you order a 2024, I recommend it. While pricing for some people, if you go from wild track to wild track, or some people are going to spend a whole lot more than what they're looking at as a 2023. Because, well, there's not really a high package anymore. If you, you now have luxury package and high package being combined into one. So expect a big price increase. So let's say you're shopping a Badlands. Before you could have a Badlands high package. But if you now are forced to get the equivalent of a, ba a high package and luxury package, expect to spend a couple, th two, three thousand dollars more. But here's what's awesome for 2024. The choice is easier. First of all, I want to have the order guide available today to check in, in on colors, but we'll have to do that next week. But I'm still hoping Wild Track changes this interior. Maddie, how do you feel about this beige interior? 
I'm not a fan of the beige. I'm more like a neutral color, a gray, black. You love the black of the Badlands? Uh, the Badlands was a uh, light gray uh, on the top. On the dot, dash, yes, but you love the black seats. Yeah. You love the marine grade vinyl. A lot. <laughs> I love that on a 2024 order, all of them get a 12-inch screen. So it now makes the mm -hmm. Big Bend... In the States, you can get a Big Ben with signature LED lights. All Broncos have LED lights, but we like the signature LED lights. They look so good, but all Broncos get the 12-inch screen. So what is an amazing deal right now for a 2024 order? order? A Big Ben or a Black Diamond. Black Diamond, if you're going to go off-roading, and yes, it won't have stabilizer bar disconnect, but for about $150 in parts, you can get manual stabilizer bar disconnect. And yes, you have to go and disconnect it underneath the vehicle but you can then buy a Big Ben and have stabilizer bar disconnect. Or if you want that locking rear diff, go with, of course, the Black Diamond. And the Black Diamond comes with the protection underneath the vehicle, which while we're off-roading, we banged up the bottom of the vehicle quite a bit at Bronco Off-Rodeo, New Hampshire, which was an amazing experience. We were a group of just three vehicles. We each had a Bronco. Mm -hmm. Father, son team were in a Bronco as well. And because we're a smaller group and because we were told that we are um, excellent drivers. We got to go on the hardest trail that they have over on at Bronco Off Rodeo. I believe it was Copplehead Mountain, and we went up some some slate slate Cobble, rocks, yeah. Cobblehead Mountain, some slate rocks with some dirt on it. We had an amazing experience with Jason, our guide. Incredible time, boy! Do we ever highly recommend you go to Bronco Off Rodeo to find out how these vehicles are more capable than unless you have millions of dollars and really don't mind scrapping a vehicle, likely you won't have the heart and the courage to go where these vehicles will take you. And there is a survey just done, and guess what? Of the midsize SUVs, these are some of the most comfortable seats on the market. So we've been saying it for years that we are finding these the most comfortable seats at Ford. More than the F-150. And it turns out of all the midsize SUVs, it's got the third most comfortable seat. So you can check out that article over at Ford Authority. Now, Badlands are finally going back to the actual steel modular bumper, which is the best for off-roading if you're in a rock area, a rocky area. So highly recommend that. Now, these you know hybrid bumpers aren't bad at all. They still have the tow hooks, which are really needed if you're going to be going off-roading. You want tow hooks in the front, tow hooks in the back for pulling people out, getting pulled out. But we love our Bronco. Because but, of that, can remove the top. <laughs> <laughs> but do, and, and it's uh, unbelievably comfortable. Yeah. It looks amazing. You get tons of compliments. We feel insecurity inside because it's yeah. big, you're higher. It's so fast. It's, it's the comfort, the security. The fun to drive. It accelerates, takes off yeah, really, really well. Uh, it handles surprisingly very, very well in the corners. You don't, you think a vehicle with 35 inch tires would be noisy on the highway, would be bumpy and jolt you around. And in the corners, you'd think there'd be a lot of sway. There's almost no sway in the corners. It's so, there's no, almost no tire noise. It's, mm -hmm. there's no weird vibration from these knobby, aggressive tires. It's incredible. And we've our two previous Broncos, we did 15,000 kilometers on both, and we did some long driving down. Uh, heck, we did from north all the way down to the, the south in the Keys of Florida. We drove all through the, we drove through the Everglades. We drove on the west coast of Florida. We visited a lot of the east coast in the States. Over two weeks, we were over 50 hours in the vehicle, and it's a vehicle you can sleep in at, you know, 85 miles per hour. Yeah, I can be sleeping while Maddie drives 80, 85 miles per hour. It's really, really an impressive, truly impressive totally. vehicle. And Richard Ake is asking, uh, is the retractable uh, top uh, is quieter than removable hard top? Retractable top? Uh, the, the soft top, is it uh, quicker to remove than the It's the a hard lot top? quicker to remove than the hard top. The only time the hard top is kind of quick to remove is if you remove only the first section over the driver and the passenger, that is two clips each. And then you got to walk one at a time back into the mm -hmm. trunk if you have trunk space. And if you don't strap them down, they're going to bump and make, when you hit bumps, they're going to make noise and slap around together and kind of get banged up. And that's just the first section. The second section is all one piece. 
being that it's all one piece, if you then want to get in the Bronco, you have to put the seats back. So forget kids, forget friends. Yeah. And when it's closed, is it quiet? More quiet to have a soft The hard top, top the hot, is hard top? the quiet. Uh, in 2021, Mark Pujol, uh, M. Pujol pointed out that he had one layer thick and now it's two layers thick. So the insulation and the sound deadening is better in his 23 compared to his 21 hard top. But in 2021, it depended on the hard top. Some hard tops were quieter than our soft top. Some hard tops were louder than our soft top. Well, the build quality has gone up a lot. The consistency has gone up a lot and the quality has gone up a lot for both models. Our soft top is a lot better than what it was. Please mm -hmm. watch our video uh, that really goes into more detail on this, but these tops are a lot better. But in 2021, it depended. Some were louder, some were quieter. Now for 23, well, guess what? The, the the hard top is a little bit better than the soft top because the soft top's back windows can still at higher speed start to kind of flap a little, but that's why we turn on the radio because yeah. this is unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievably practical. To get it open in this position, mm -hmm. it takes three seconds. One, two, maybe three if I didn't, you know, sit up really quickly and I'm trying to watch out for my yeah, back. Yeah, you don't have to remove it at all. And at the same time, Liminox uh, said, uh, any reason why I only saw stuff top in the dealership lot? Because he said in Much Canada, we yeah. have a lot of snow, so I don't understand no, why it's we great. have soft top. <laughs> yeah, the soft top is incredible in the snow. Please watch our video. We have photos of showing you how we're stuck in a snowbank. We, on a snowy day where it was only like minus, like just below freezing and it was a snowstorm, we we're like a light snowstorm. We're like, cool, we opened up the top and drove around with our tubes on. <laughs> It's super practical. We mm -hmm. had no issues. There is this darn video. One guy, one, one individual that must have been had, you know, up n way up north in like getting close to the North Pole in Northwest Territories, Yukon or Alaska and had some side wind. And we never had that. It was no, we've had a lot of side winds, yeah, but, but we've never, we never had, had snow had in snow the vehicle. In so, the you know, this that video went viral, the photos went viral, every journalist jumped on it mm -hmm. and gave you the impression that if you have a soft top, you're gonna end up with snow in your vehicle. That's only if one, you close your top improperly, and two, you have insane winds going sideways right up into the vehicle. It's not impossible, but it's highly unlikely. You know, you had um, Light Bright Nation, uh, the Williams family. They were essentially driving in kind of a tornado, near a tornado, oh. major storm, and there wasn't water coming into the vehicle. Yes, you can be inside the vehicle and you can force your hand out. But that's that's kind of the equivalent to being like, don't buy a house that has windows because if you open the window, you can then stick your hand outside of the window. And if the window's open, then snow and water can come in. That's the level of wow factor to kind of the impression that journalists and bad media were giving about the hardtop. But then again, media and the entire system will also try to convince you that salt and fat are bad for you, that eating red meat is bad for you, but somehow, corn syrup, sugar, cereal, all Never those things that give that, you diabetes, all those things that give you dementia, all those things that give you uh, Alzheimer's, all the things that give you horrific weight gain and obesity and heart attacks, essentially all the things that will kill you, but unfortunately make a ton of money and crazy good profit for companies, gets put in everything. Corn syrup is unbelievably deadly. It, by legal requirement, if we're really trying to save the planet, there should be a legal requirement to have honey, maple syrup, and molasses as the only sugars that are allowed to be used. Now, why honey? Well, because it would force corporations to invest and take care of the bees. There'd be beehives everywhere, things that kill off bees like pesticides. Heck, Corporations are trying to sell you on the idea that cereal is healthy for you when cereal, wheat, and oats, oats should only be eaten by horses, and even then it's not that good for horses either. Now that's all sprayed with pesticides. And pesticides are giving us all sorts of genetic orders. Heck, our water system is highly polluted with hormones and 
microplastics and we're, there's not a whole lot of effort being done to you know reduce microplastics but then there's this huge effort like the whole planet's going to be saved if we get rid of gasoline engines no that's just about removing more freedom away from us to make sure that we actually can't move around to take away our freedom and our liberty in regards to movement has nothing to do with saving the planet because there's so many much much better areas to save the planet and there's next to no efforts going on there and carbon levels have been much much higher in the past my i i, I tend to kind of side and i'm actually impressed when the, this opinion was very unpopular but since the 1970s uh, my father has a doctorate and he's a university professor in geography um He's done a double doctorate, but the first one didn't get accepted because it was too ahead of his time, and now it's stuff that's now accepted. But anywho, he was saying way back when oil causes cancer and plastics cause cancer, and these are things that should never come into contact with your skin because the skin absorbs. And he was saying way back when he was talking about these things that are still very much not popular and you're saying that salt and fat are good for you that sugar is bad for you and there's a huge push in the 70s but you know scientists were paid to say that salt and fat were the reason americans and all of us were getting obese and having health issues and they're pushing us onto plastics like margarine and pushing us onto a sugar diet and why because i, th I think somewhere in the system corporations are happy if we're docile, ineffective, kind of non-dangerous, calm humans, and especially men with essentially no hormones, so you see it more and more, uh, there aren't a lot of strong men remaining. But anyways, way back when, in the 70s, he was saying that climate change, yes, we absolutely have climate change, because we ended a glacier period, we ended a... Um, uh, not a glacial period, I'm sorry, but uh, an ice age. We ended an ice period, an ice age, 12,000 years ago. We started to get out of that. 10,000 years ago, we were out of it, and it's just cyclical. We had a very cold period 10, 12,000 years ago, and things heat up, and then things are going to be cooling off. But we're you know, things are going to heat up and they're required to heat up to then force us into the next ice age and that these ice ages and then heated up periods of time have been going on for hundreds of thousands of years and carbon quantities change with that. Right now in the carbon, the percentage of CO2 in the atmosphere is 0.3% at its um, and it's gone up, sorry, it's at 0.4. It was at 0.3 three and that if it goes below point if it goes down to point two we can't support life on the planet we can't support plant life on the planet plants need carbon so when we're at point three we could have been freaking out being like oh my goodness it's the 19 you know it's 1800s and we're at point three carbon percentage of carbon in the atmosphere and if we go down to point two all veg uh, all vegetation dies and we have no food left on the planet because all the meat we eat also relies on that. So we didn't know back then, but there could have been a huge freak out and all sorts of societal controls taking place to put more carbon into the atmosphere. But now over several hundred years, we've gone up by 0.1 of a percentile and we're all freaking out. We're gonna completely change, remove all our freedoms. But I guess I did get into the rant tonight. So that's, yeah. the, that's the rant for tonight. There you go. <laughs> and I, just to come back for, uh, about the soft top in the winter, uh, when we have a lot of snow, the, the top doesn't go like that inside, it, it stays strong, It's uh, you yeah. have bars, so nothing to worry about. Uh, and these new tops look amazing. Yeah, we never had an issue uh, in a snowstorm with the, the top. For sure, it's like every car, you need to remove <laughs> the snow sometimes. If you let it uh, go like that for one month, maybe you will have trouble, but it's not normal to let it go uh, that longer. <laughs> The new tops look amazing. They're more smooth, you could say. They're not they don't have as many ripples. The windows don't have as many ripples, but the top when you look down on it, it's it's a nice smooth material. So looking really great.